Now maybe this is a bit too much of a close-up shot. Too much for you all to bear. Perhaps I should replace it with something more beautiful than myself. How about that? Now hopefully the windy conditions won't spoil this video. I'm just having a walk up in Clipson Old Quarter and I can honestly say although having seen this moth hundreds of times throughout my lifetime both as a breeder and as moth trapper this is the first time I've actually come across an adult freshly emerged in the wild there can be no better sight really than seeing a freshly emerged elephant hawk moth. It's a superb moth. Clothed in two colours, a beautiful olive green and the vibrant barbie pink. The hind wings are even more bright pink than the forewings and the thorax and the abdomen. This is just an absolute beautiful species. Yet again it's representative of one of those moths that prove the majority of the public's conception that moths are just brown and furry and horrible and chase around the kitchen light. Some look like this, others look even better than this although they don't match the size of the elephant hawk moth. The elephant hawk moth may not be our largest moth, or indeed our largest hawk moth, and that's by some considerable margin of measurement. The privet hawk moth, for instance, dwarfs this, and this is a fairly decent sized hawk moth. There is one similar species, and that's the small elephant hawk moth, which, as you might have guessed, is smaller than this chap. Nonetheless, beautifully coloured as well. It makes you wonder why nature would choose to clothe the moth in beautiful pink scales and hairs. The only real reason is that it's camouflage when the moth is at rest on the flowering heads of the food plants of the caterpillar, which in this instance is rose bay willow herb used to be called fireweed. That was after the days of the Blitz, when one of the first plants to colonise the rubble in the aftermath of the Blitz in the Second World War was Rose Bay Willow Herb. Hence the term fireweed, because all the buildings had been on fire before. Rose Bay Willow Herb is tremendously common. It's very common on waste ground and industrial sites. So is this. Wherever you get rosebay willow herb, you'll get this moth. And it'll turn up regularly at even a light trap operated deep within the urban environment. Sometimes you can get quite good numbers of these all of a sudden just dropping in. And they do tend to thud in to the light. This one's going nowhere. And is being especially confiding the caterpillars, I'll drop a photo in here, are equally impressive, but they're not coloured like this. Whereas some caterpillars can give an indication of the probable coloration of the adult. The larva of the elephant hawk moth doesn't, but it's an impressive caterpillar. Often seen wandering, looking for a site to pupate late summer and early autumn. It is some species though, isn't it? If you've not seen this moth before, then I urge you to sort yourself out with a trap or go to some organised event and see one of these beauties. The hindwings, as I say, are really 
a much brighter pink than on these forewings and there's a darker area in the hindwing I'm surprised actually that this one's not to become active thankfully it hasn't and it's sat here quite nicely although it's not completely at rest because the antenna are sticking outwards if the moth was completely at rest those antenna would be tucked right in right at the side of the thorax this is a super species absolutely beautiful these used to go down really well in the days when Dennis and I used to have mini bees events at the Sherwood Forest Visitor Centre these with them being large and so colourful always went down well with the children and with the adults and at times it was hard to say who was the adult and who was the child because the excitement of seeing such a fantastic moth made the adults become children really that's what some insects can do and that's certainly what the elephant hawk moth can do